Hi everybody. I'm just about to show you Illustrator. Illustrator is a fantastic program because it does amazing drawings and also gives you a lot of opportunity to play around with text and shapes and uh, all sorts of things. So let's kick off by just having a quick little demo of some of these tools. I'm not going to show you all of them uh, because some of them are quite complex. So I'll get into detail a bit later on. But for now, let's just have a look at um, what some of these tools do. So before you even begin, you need to open up a new artboard. So in Photoshop they call it Canvas, but in Illustrator they call it an artboard. Okay, when you do that, you'll see that you come up to this new document box. And here is where you give your preferences as to what you're, you want your artboard to look like. So we'll just start off by naming this and we'll call it um, your name, which is my name is Robbo and then um, test illustrator. It's really important to name it and save files regularly. Okay, now you can see here that the profile says basic RGB. RGB is the way that computers and screens actually look at color. And for a particular um, project that's pretty good. If we were to actually get this to take or take it to a printer, we would go to print like so. And then we would make sure it's in CMYK, which is the way that professional printers actually see the different colors and the way it's printed out because it's printed in cyan, magenta, yellow, etc. But as I said, we're actually doing this for a printer that would be connected to our computer. So we're going to keep it as basic RGB. You can see that the color mode is RGB. Uh, when you have a look at the raster effects, so if you want to do something uh, tricky and make some really nice looking artwork, you need to move that up to maybe medium to make it high quality. Leave that there, that's fine. All right, now let's look at size. So being in Australia, most of the work that we do is printed out on A4. So if you've got your printer, normal printer connected to a computer, that's what it'll be, it'll be A4. You can see that there's all sorts of um, other sizes that you can be using. Um, you can actually, if you want to, you can go custom and you can tell it exactly what you want it to do. But we're gonna go A4. Also, you can see here that it says orientation. We've got portrait and we've got landscape. So portrait will be like this, landscape, like that. Let's leave it on landscape for now. And here we go. So landscape, let's leave it on landscape for now. And here we go. So landscape, as if you were painting landscape and obviously if it was portrait it's going to be long. Okay, now let's have a look to the left. You can see here there's a lot of tools. I've got a couple of plugins here where I do measurements. So yours won't even have these little tools in here, but the rest of them should be here. You'll notice something else. On the side, you can see that if you press these little triangles on the edge, you've got more options for the tools. Okay, so this is your selection tool. If you make something, it selects it. So let's make something. Over here is your shape tool. When you click that side there, you'll find that there's plenty of options. So we've got rectangles, we've got rounded rectangle tool, we've got the ellipse, which is your circle or your oval. You've got your polygon tool, you've got your star tool, you've got your flare tool. Let's go to star tool. Now, I could just draw a star, just like so. Now I've already set up how I want this to look. You can see here that it's got a fill and you get plenty of other options. And you'll also see that it's also got the stroke. Okay, the stroke is the bit around the outside and the fill is obviously what's filled in on the inside. Also here down the bottom, you can see that there's fill and there's also stroke. If you double click on this, you can change the color there. Okay, so now we've got a red star and we have a stroke, a stroke being the bit on the outside. Now, this is very interesting because if you were to do a drawing in Photoshop, something like that, you would find that if you start stretching things, as I'm doing here, that your lines wouldn't be perfect like that. See how they're really nice and clear and crisp. If we were to do that, 
and do that in Photoshop and we tried to actually change the size of something, what we would find is that it would actually pixelate and it would go very soft and jaggedy. This is what you call a vector graphic. Vector graphics, it doesn't matter how big you make them, how much you pull them, they will always be perfect. And this is great when you're doing drawings and illustrations. You could do something as big as a billboard and it will not pixelate, it will not get soft and fuzzy. Okay, so you'll get a nice clear picture. All right, so we have a star. Now, if I play around with this star, see how I'm stretching it? That's not a good thing unless we want to give it that look. But if I want this to be perfect, I'll make sure I put my finger on the keyboard on shift and keep my finger down on shift. And you can see here when I do that, that that stays perfect. If I want this to turn around, see how I've just I'm not touching anything, I'm just slightly going over the edge. When it turns into this, okay, I can just turn it around and I can make it go wherever I like. So rotating rotation tool. All right, so now we know that this tool here will move and rotate. If I go into the corners of this shape, I hit shift, I can make it bigger or smaller. So this is a really handy tool. The next one here is your direct selection tool. That means I'm just going to select a part. So for example, I might grab that. See now the difference there. So I can change the shape of a shape by grabbing different bits and pieces. Very, very handy. Obviously in this particular case that wouldn't be a good idea, but It means that I can play around with shapes a little bit. Okay, the next really great tool that you need to know about is your pen tool. Your pen tool should not really have a fill and you'll see why in a minute. Okay, so your pen tool, I've made sure I've got a stroke, it's one point, click. Hit shift. Click, click. Can you see as I'm clicking and I'm pulling, I'm creating these really terrific shapes. And so on and so forth. Now, obviously this shape is not great. Okay, it needs a lot of work. So I would then get my direct selection tool and I'll start playing, see how I can just grab those handles, I can muck around with it, grab this one here, pull it down, make that smaller. So, pen tool for drawing, drawing very precise looking drawings and your direct selection tool, okay? Direct selection tool. Next thing that um, is a great tool is your type tool. Type tool means that you can type. It's just the same as Word, those sorts of things, but in order to change anything, you can see that the, all the options are at the top, just like they were with your pen tool and for your shape tool. You get lots of different options up here. All right, so first obvious thing is your text. The next thing is if it's a type of text that can be changed there, let's have a look. Um, let's go Arial. You can type a text in if you know what it is. Okay, so there's Arial. Let's have a look and see what else there is. Ah, you've got bold, you have bold italic, you've got black. Okay, so you can do more with the text in there. The sizes, up or down there. Your color, at the moment it's black. You can go in here. So I want it blue, or if you want to really fine tune it, come in here, and there is your text. 
Notice once I clicked off my text tool, it goes straight to this selection tool. Okay, so then I can move it around. If I want to stretch it, I can. Although I wouldn't recommend that you do that sort of stuff with text. You should really keep it as is, but um, occasionally you can sort of muck around with it and tweak it. The other tool here is your line, and inside your line is a lot of other different types of lines. Lines are fairly basic. You click down and you create. Okay, Whatever you've got here, remember, is what's going to happen. If you cannot see anything, then you know that it's got something to do with the fact that perhaps you haven't created a stroke and given it a color. Okay, you need to make sure that if you want to see that stroke that you've got that. Okay, so just a line. If you put your finger on shift, nice straight line. See that? See that? Boom. Okay. Next thing. You've already seen shapes. Here's something you probably didn't know. Here's a polygon. There's a normal polygon shape. I've got my finger on shift so it stays nice and straight. Look at that. There's a polygon. What if I want more sides? Whoa. So you double click. Look at that. And that's exactly the same for any of these shapes. So if I go star, double click, look at this. Whoa. Okay. So go to my direct selection tool, put it on there, grab it, shift, boom, bang. Okay. Other tools, plenty of them. As I said, at this stage you wouldn't worry too much. Here, if you want to, you can, if I'm moving over, can you see that I'm moving over here now? You can mess around with this, okay? This is called a gradient. See that? Okay. Each one of these things, have a look at what's happening to my triangle over there. I'm pulling this. Look. Whoa. Okay, I can add. See how it's got a plus? Let's add another color in there. Over here where the colors are. Let's go something really wacky like red. Ooh, okay. Or even more options over here in the palette. You can keep on adding more. You can move these. You can move that across. Okay, that's how you get your metallic looking um, colors. You can get some really interesting reflections and things like that. So this is a very powerful tool. That's your gradients. Okay, let's just click off there. That's a lot of things to take in for now. Um, probably one more thing that I could show you is something that I really love. Okay, let's click on this. Just say I want this polygon here to be the same pattern as that. Okay, see this eyedropper? Bang. I need to make sure that whatever I'm changing I have switched on. Okay, so you need to make sure you switch it on with your selection tool. Then, eyedropper, bang. That's your first activity, your first exercise. Um, if you want to know more about any of these tools here, I think it's a terrific idea. All you need to do is put your uh, cursor over the top and it will tell you what each one of these things is. Why not go to Google, type it in, Illustrator, type in the tool name and you'll find out heaps of information and find out what these things do. Okay, that's it for now and I'll catch you next time. Bye.